Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Bitcoin Cash Network discussion. I am your host, Chief Lightning. Um, today's topic of discussion is Flipstarter, how peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding empowers Bitcoin Cash. Cash, cash, cash. Um, I will open the stage to questions at uh, the end of our, our panel discussion here. Um, and uh, if you do not wish to speak, but you still have a question that you would like to ask uh, people in this discussion, um, feel free to write it in the Network Discussions Telegram, uh, which is at BCH Network Discussions. Um, I will be monitoring to see if anyone posts questions there. Um, if you have a question, a question for a specific guest, uh, please save it for the end of the panel. Um, and without further ado, um, here we go. Uh, so today I am joined by an excellent panel. Uh, we have Max, who is an entrepreneur and Flipstar user. Uh, also, uh, we have most of the creators of Flipstarter with us today. We have Emergent Reasons, who is the organizer of the project. Uh, Dagger, the author of the Electron Cash plugin, Jonathan Silverblood, uh, the app and full stack developer, and Imaginary Username, who was responsible for the strategy and vision. Um, so what, what inspired uh, me to suggest this as a topic for network discussion was actually one of the previous network discussions uh, in which uh, Saqib of One Dot Surgery uh, really stressed the point that Flipstarter is uh, a really important and unique tool for BCH, um, something that uh, uh, doesn't exist anywhere else as far as I know. Um, and um, Emergent Reasons recently wrote a fantastic article on Read.Cash uh, about Flipstarter and the history, um, but for those of you uh, who have not read it, um, um, or maybe don't like reading. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure John and uh, Imaginary will be able to jump in here too uh, and tell us a little bit about the history uh, and necessity uh, for the creation of Flipstarter, um, how this all came to be. Um, so uh, John and uh, New Name, could you please tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired the creation of Flipstarter um, and the history of how it came to be? Yeah, it was it, it was a combination of just a glaring need that that was that was uh, screaming at us at the at the time, and uh, just something that also had been needed for a long time anyway. It just became kind of a critical, urgent need at that time. Probably, uh, you name will be the best to describe the the strategy of it and and how it came about. And uh, I'm gonna see if we can get a link to the article that uh, describes the whole you know, story in detail. We'll try to add that to the top at some point if we can. Hello, guys, do you hear me? Yep. Okay, so uh, I will just uh, describe a little bit about the origins of uh, Flipstarter, which definitely was not born out of a vacuum. It's not like, oh, we, uh, we, thought, of, we uh, thought of one day that, oh, uh, BCH stuff needs funding, and then it just came out of the blue. No, it actually, it actually came from a pretty old, uh, pretty old uh, libertarian niche idea that has a precedent on Bitcoin um, itself. Um, so the idea of Flipstarter came from the concept of assurance contracts, which is fairly old as an idea. The, the idea of assurance contract is basically as the following. Um, if, a, if a number of people wants to fund a public good, they typically face a uh, big problem. Which is that, okay, if I want to fund a public good uh, collectively, I generally expect that, okay, if I put money into it, it and it gets done, the, to, have this, to have this happen voluntarily, what I get from what I get, the benefits from that public project should exceed what I put in. And this can only happen if the public project is actually funded properly. Um, that uh, you know, at least it should get what the project requested. But uh, 
he, but then comes a problem uh, if you do it the complete uh, uh, without any frills. Uh, if you do it the donation way, uh, everybody just chucked in a little bit of coins here and there. There is a good chance that if the project might not be funded properly, and then you know uh, for each for each individual uh, that's contributing to the project, if the project ends up not being funded properly, then the money, the little bit of money that you chuck in just becomes basically wasted. It might still be put to good use, but uh, you know, you no longer have a project and uh, uh, that, what, that whatever use it, it, your money is put to is no longer accountable. So that is a problem. People want to make sure that they put money in it and the money only goes through if uh, the project as a whole is collectively funded. And that is the origin of uh, assurance contracts. So this idea has been floated as a way to fund public goods for you know, basically voluntarists and libertarians for a long time. Um, but there has been, well, there, there, were, there were some tools and uh, early attempts and you know, Kickstarter is obviously around, but it is a trusted platform. And uh, we have all seen what uh, trusted platforms can do in times of crisis. Uh, Indiegogo, uh, Indiegogo regular, regularly gets in the news for just basically disbanding or even straight up uh, confiscating funds for stuff they don't like. So um, early in earlier in Bitcoin history, that is a time before even uh, the Bitcoin Cash split, um, Mike Kern, a very prominent uh, Bitcoiner, uh, had a project called Lighthouse. That is basically a standalone client that uh, did exactly what I described in assurance contract. People can pull, people can pledge their money together, and uh, the that money is only sent collectively to the project if the target is hit, and uh, that was uh, doable due to a. Uh, otherwise very rarely used uh, function that Satoshi has left in uh, straight up from very early designs of Bitcoin. Um, so that project was that project was attempted by Mike Hearn, but uh, it didn't go very far. Um, one because of because the uh, UX wasn't that good. Uh, and uh, second and uh, secondly because of uh, Pretty soon after he did that, uh, the uh, infamous block size wars or scaling debates began, and people basically threw all their attention to it, and uh, nobody cared about what he wanted to do anyway. And then you know, blocks didn't happen, and a lot of other things happened. So um, we look at that and uh, thought. And, and then, you know, fast forward to a time when p the main debate on Bitcoin Cash became, okay, we have public goods and we actually have a bunch of people who wanted to fund them, but we suffer from the same problem that uh, assurance contracts uh, attempt to solve. Nobody wants to just, just, you know, chuck in a bunch of coin, chuck in a bunch of coins without knowing that, okay, other people will chuck in their coins too. And then this thing is going to get funded and do and be accountable for what it, for what it says it will do. Um, so we look back and rediscover uh, that assurance contracts uh, existed on Bitcoin as well, uh, as well as Bitcoin Cash. And we basically said to ourselves, OK, we can do better and we now have a need. And that's uh, how it started. Um, so I will uh, hand it back to Emergent Reasons to describe the rest. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, right. So the, there was the need. Um, we had to have a way to fund things. And uh, yeah, uh, at, the, at the time, uh, one of the reasons I wrote this, uh, the article that I'm trying to figure out how to share here um, about the origins of, of Flipstarter was that at the time, it, it was quite a political issue. And, and Flipstarter, we worked very, very hard to make it non-political and to just make it a uh, flat uh, funding tool to prove the question of, like you name said, can you actually fund things uh, voluntarily? Is that even possible? Does that actually work? Because uh, the assertion at the time in the BCH ecosystem by uh, by the lead uh, node at the time 
was that it's impossible. It doesn't work. And uh, a lot of people thought, wait, that doesn't sound right. That, you know, maybe we just haven't done it the right way or, uh, you know, haven't taken the right approach to it. And so, yeah, the, uh, the assurance contract method, uh, you know, you can just think of that as Kickstarter. Um, you know, every, when it gets funded, uh, it only gets funded if, if the full thing, uh, if, if enough money is, is pledged to complete the whole project and the whole plan. So yeah, that, that was it at the time. Um, we just decided to, to prove that, to, to take that hypothesis that it is possible and, and, and do it and build it and show that, uh, that it was possible to fund things, that it was possible to have a voluntary funding of something like infrastructure. So yeah, that, that, that was the origin of it, um, trying to prove that we could fund Bitcoin Cash infrastructure. And, and we knew at the time that, hey, you know what, if, if this works, then there's no reason for this to be limited to Bitcoin Cash infrastructure, right? That there's, there's nothing limiting it really to that because Bitcoin Cash is just money. So you use it for all kinds of things. Um, but we had a very, very narrow focus when we created it, which was just for Bitcoin Cash infrastructure. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of kept that flavor of Bitcoin Cash infrastructure since then. But uh, we see a lot of other potential for it. And we've seen a lot of projects that are not uh, Bitcoin Cash infrastructure uh, come out over time. Some of them not even really BCH related, but still being funded by BCH as money, which is great. Um, you know, not everything has to be about BCH. Uh, BCH is working as money is doing its thing. So, yeah, let me, let me stop there and we'll go on. Thank you very much. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, can you think off the top of your head uh, what what sort of non BCH centric uh, flip starters have you seen? Yes. So uh, there's been just generally, um, I wouldn't call it investment because uh, people are very very uh, um, right. It is very risky with the current global regulatory environment to to call things an investment. Um, you know, or shares or anything like that. So there's been people have very carefully avoided that and not gotten into that. But still, um, for example, Max here has has been a, a good example of, um, you know, proposing something that, that he thinks would be a good thing to be done and then proposing it to the ecosystem. And it happens to be mostly people who are already in the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem who funded it. But I don't think it was only those people. There was a lot of people who funded his project. And uh, yeah, so that's just an investment in a local community, right? Like building up a local community and, and uh, doing things that are valuable for the community there. They're not, you know, very specifically BCH oriented things. It's more like just, uh, uh, Max, Max should talk more about what uh, he has done. Uh, I, I would love for him to be able to, but he seems to have disappeared. So oh, no, uh, when, no. he, yeah, when, when he comes back, uh, we'll, we'll get uh, the inside scoop on uh, his experience using Flipstarter. But uh, in, in the meantime, um, there, there, I'm, was another, I'm... there was another funny one. Um, <laughs> okay. There was a, so, so Flipstarter is, is very unique in, in that it's a permissionless funding system, like your name said, right? Uh, anyone can launch a thing on the web they have full control over it. Nobody is there to take their money away. Nobody can, um, like the money doesn't even go anywhere until the, the actual, uh, the, the whole campaign is, is fully funded until all the pledges are available. Um, so it, it's very unique in that aspect. But uh, one Flipstarter used Flipstarter to fund a custodial um, funding system. So, you know, like a Kickstarter using BCH and maybe some other crypto, but maybe it was just BCH. But um, so they used the permissionless non-custodial Flipstarter to raise money to create a custodial um, fundraising platform that had a, you know, a simpler, smoother UX or something like that. I don't know. I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> it's like a funding inception. Yeah, yeah, funding inception, <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and there's, that's a funny one also. Um, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, uh, Flipstarter itself has never run a Flipstarter. So, <laughs> yeah, that, mm. that would be too, yeah. <laughs> why not? Oh, why, why not? Um, why not? So, 
I guess a couple of reasons. One is that um, we got a lot of generous donations. Well, the early work that was done on it was completely voluntary. All of us just got together and we decided that, hey, this is so important that we just have to do this. Um, and a matter of fact, that's something that I wrote in the um, that that origin story article was uh, there, there was a lot of work to be done and it wasn't free in terms of resources. Right. It took us a huge amount of time, um, several months um, of, of pretty much just straight up work on Flipstarter that we just were doing all the time during that time period. Um, so that definitely wasn't free, but uh, it was mostly done as, as volunteers. And then as we got to where we were publishing, hey, we're going to do this. This is what we've done so far. We actually started to get donations that made it easier to support uh, some of the development being done on it. Um, yeah, and then after that, uh, yeah, that's, that's a longer story of uh, what comes next after that original flip starter was created. Maybe, maybe I'll talk about that later. That might take a little while. Sure. But, uh, yeah, there's never been a specific need to have a flip starter. Flip starter. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Speaking of development, this is a perfect segue to uh, Jonathan. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, challenges or some interesting points about uh, developing assurance contracts um, on BCH? Sure, if I can try at least. So when we started working on Flipstarter, uh, we knew that what we were going to do had not really been done in a fully functional working way before. As previously said, there, there was the light start, Lighthouse uh, setup, uh, but that never really took off the ground. And one of the things that you encounter quite early when you're doing this is that despite the actual funding transaction when everything's said and done, is uh, perfectly valid and even matching standardness rules for, for the network, the way in which you construct that transaction is uncommon. And so there was no wallets out there that actually supported the action of uh, taking these pledges towards this shared transaction and then um, making everything just uh, happen. And Dega will probably speak more about well, that when he comes to his end, but uh, that is one of the things we kind of hit. Another one, uh, that has since been solved uh, is a, it's a matter of documentation. So when we started working on Flipstarter, there wasn't that much documentation available to explain how the Bitcoin protocol and all the parts worked. And they were mostly spread out into various improvement proposals that uh, kind of describe what happened when uh, the chain fork to, to make an improvement. And so you had to go look for things and kind of piece together uh, what the current state is. And multiple times during the development, we, we ended up looking at outdated documentation and things not working and then spending a bunch of time kind of figuring out why. The uh, documentation being a bit poor uh, is uh, quite nasty. Uh, but on top of that, we also had some issues with the, um, the available tooling, the available libraries we could use, because just like half a year to a year before, uh, things were looking quite nice. And there was very popular libraries that seemed to be working just fine, but over time had attrition. And so when we picked up... Um, uh, picked up working on Flipstarter, uh, we tried to use the, the most common library at the time, Bitbox, and had issues with the, the network connection and had to use other um, solutions in order to, to deal with those drawbacks. And while doing all of these things and like fighting all of these issues, despite the problem being a relatively simple one, like Everyone makes a part of a transaction. You put all the parts in a big bowl, you attach them like a puzzle, and then you, you send it to the network. And like, the basic parts are, are pretty, uh, pretty simple. But despite all this, um, or rather during all this, uh, there was also a significant time pressure because we didn't know that we were going to make something like Flipstarter until the debate really heated up 
on how to fund Bitcoin Cash going forward. And it became obvious that um, a uh, infrastructure funding plan to take money from the mining incentive, the incentive designed to secure the network, um, was actually going to be something that would happen on Bitcoin Cash if we couldn't kind of prove that alternative funding is actually viable. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> you, you mentioned uh, there, there was not a wallet that was ready. Um, and I think that <clears throat> will, will uh, bring us to uh, Duggar. Could you tell us about uh, why Electron Cash was, was chosen? And challenges you had uh, perhaps uh, making, making Electron Cash work? All right, okay. Well, first of all, um, Electron Cash is a wallet we were all familiar with. And it is a wallet that is widely used, not by everyone, but uh, for desktop users at least. But most of all, it was a you to develop a plugin for Electron Cash was a solution that we know would work. We know that it was possible, and we knew that uh, given the time constraints, we were likely to succeed because um, Electron Cash is very powerful. Or it has a very powerful plugin system. You can basically do anything. <laughs> um, there is, uh, you get access to all the internals of the wallet. So, for example, in the case of um, having to do a custom transaction like we had to, um, which was not implemented, we were able to you know, extend the existing uh, transaction interface to to support uh, our needs. Uh, in addition, there were um, other plugins we could look at to learn how it worked. And, and we actually found one open source plugin that we used as like a basis, as a starting point for the Flip Starter plugin. Um, so uh, in addition, also Electron Cash has a very good reputation. So um, for those who wanted to donate larger amounts of money. It's it's good to have uh, to base it on something that already has the trust in the community. Um, even though we knew that we couldn't reach everyone, we would hopefully reach a large enough crowd. And that is at least what we would bet on. And, and, it, and the bet worked out, so I guess uh, that helped. I, I'm yeah, just kind of... Sorry, I, want, go ahead. I want to I want to reinforce that last point um, that uh, the, the, the if you look at the, the technical setup for flip starter um, as, as Dago mentioned some of these flip starters involve very large amounts of money right hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases uh, and um, you you I mean so, some people do put that kind of money on their phone. Right. Some people do. I, I have seen it. I know they do. But most people don't. And uh, when when you're pledging, you know, fifty thousand dollars to something or one hundred thousand dollars to something, um, you know, doing that based on some, uh, you know, web wallet that, you know, works in the browser and, it, and, it, and it's pretty convenient. It seems like a good idea. But until you think about those numbers and then you think. Yeah, okay, let's not screw up something involving $50,000 or $100,000, right? So that's a huge part of, of why Electron Cash plugin was chosen, even though we absolutely knew that the user experience was going to be bad, right? We made it as good as we could, and Dagger worked hard to make that plugin nice and smooth and just, you know, you can copy paste, copy paste. Um, but yeah, Electron Cash, that trust was really, really important so that everybody knew the wallet's there. They know how the wallets work. They trust Electron Cash. They know that it's not going to just do some stupid thing and all of a sudden their money goes poof. So, yeah, that, that was a huge aspect of it. And, and we absolutely knew that the user experience was not going to be good. But uh, the safety was more important than the user experience at that point. Uh, now that we have had uh, Flipstarter for more than a year, I forget how long it's been now, maybe almost two years. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
the the user experience uh, has not improved much. Uh, is there hope uh, that it will improve? Yeah, uh, I, I can speak to that. We don't have uh, software Verde on here, and we don't have. Uh, there's another guy, Sahid, who has worked on this quite a bit, and um, uh, there's a guy named Salim Code uh, who has worked on user experience. So they all. Everybody wants the user experience to be better. But those three people have actually done very specific things to make it better. Um, Salim Code has actually upgraded it quite a bit since then. So you might not notice it because they've been incremental changes, but it's actually much better than it was when it first came out. Um, Dagger has also worked on upgrades to the plugin that make it better. You can like cancel pledges. Uh, it adds comments uh, to... Uh, your history of transactions so that you know when you made a pledge. Actually, I think maybe Free Trader from BCHN maybe did that um, and, and several other improvements. Um, Sahid has made one that uh, lets you create a flip starter on IPFS and it's still quite experimental, but he's always doing some wild thing that's like off uh, on the fringe and does some crazy awesome thing. But um. Yes, yeah, so he's done that. That's like the creating the flip starter aspect he has made easier. Um, but that's all, all on like separate projects, right? And then the, the big one, Verde, Software Verde. Uh, you can look them up on Twitter, their Software Verde. Um, they made a version of Flipstarter. They, they used Flipstarter to fund a project. <laughs> so they funded a project with the existing Flipstarter to make a better Flipstarter interface. And so that interface is there, it's done today. And, and there's, there's several uh, flip starters that have been funded with it. And with that one, you can um, have the option of using the plugin or you can go through uh, just a QR code. Like they put up a QR code and you can send money to that. And that is doing exactly what I said before, like with the web wallet, you know, the, the site actually has a little mini web wallet like that works temporarily. You send the money to it and it holds the money for just like a split second. And then it does the special magic to create the transaction that's needed uh, for Flipstarter pledges. And, and it does that kind of in the background. And, but for the user, it just looks like you send money to a QR code. Um, so that has a little bit of a weaker uh, security prospect than, than the Electron Cash setup has, right? But as long as you make that web uh, wallet solid, reliable then it works very well and i've used it and it's super easy you, you open up a flip starter you scan the qr code and you've done it you've, you've made a pledge to it so yeah there, there actually have been quite a bit of improvements it's just a matter of um yeah that that brings up that goes back to the question of why flip starter hasn't made a flip starter it's because all the people who have been working on it and made it um no one yet has stepped up to make a platform where you could use like this website to launch flip starters and you could use it to you know launch cancel create multiple flip starters track reputation that kind of thing until that exists um the the security setup of the the web wallet on those things that software verde made is a, a, a little bit hard to to set up for the average person so it, it, it comes down to, in the end, why the UX hasn't improved is because nobody has taken it on as a business opportunity to, to make a platform out of Flipstarter. Um, so I mean, there, are, there are other things ahead. you can do besides making a platform. There are, uh, you can do some tweaks in the interface. For example, uh, in the plugin, a much requested feature is to improve on canceling. So it's hard to know which flip starters you have pledged to. And we have an option to cancel all, but we don't have an option to cancel individual. So you still have the uh, option to do incremental small improvements that would actually help a lot in the long run, I believe. Um, yeah. I, I would argue that the missing piece to make Flipstarter a truly great experience is actually a wallet that understands Flipstarter in, in, in depth or a wallet that is understanding of any transaction construction, like a templated wallet. And I know at least three different teams trying to build a wallet with similar criteria right now. 
tell us more. Yes, it sounds like there's hope. Please tell <laughs> tell us more. Yeah, so so I, I don't want to uh, talk about the other two teams, but I can talk for general protocols uh, if that's okay. So uh, we are trying to build a templated wallet that is a wallet that does not have any like internal d definitions that a transaction must look this way, but rather has templates. And when you try to make a transaction, you get to see who the different parties to that transaction are, what rules they are, and what actions they are able to take. And then the template itself describes to the wallet all the requirements to make the transaction. And when you have that, you can make a template for a Flipstarter uh, pledge. And you, you can then build the Flipstarter as a web application. And it will just be, you scan with a QR code, but instead of needing the situation you have today, we need to copy paste some data and validate it on the other end, uh, or where you have this custodial middleman to uh, do the arrangement work, uh, the wallet will actually understand how to construct and, and, and validate the pieces on its own. Thank you. Um, I, I know that uh, that's that's one one wallet in development. Uh, GP is working on one. I know also uh, Pox, uh, Pocket Wallet has some Flipstarter uh, interaction abilities. I haven't tested it myself yet. Are there any other wallets out there that that uh, have some Flipstarter functionality already that anyone's aware of? I believe uh, there is a web-based. Yep. Right. You, you go ahead, John. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, okay, I'll just say quickly. So Sumari, a guy named Sumari Prince, uh, he made uh, a web wallet that lets you, that knows how to kind of speak the language of Flipstarter and it can look at it and it understands what's going on and it's able to construct, construct those transactions. It's a web wallet. So you open up your browser and you have to have a, a created a web wallet with uh, that site. I'm not sure if that one is maintained. I think I think it is. Um, and then maybe Jonathan knows others. I think he does. No, so I, I know of Pocket, which uh, understands Flipstarter itself and not that many other uh, similar schemes, uh, which makes it somewhat easier. And I know of Shumari, but... Um, should, the Shumari version is custodial, so a lot of the value that Flipstarter provide is kind of lost when you need to go through a, a custodian. Uh, while for Poxed, the Pocket Wallet, uh, it should be better. But Pocket Wallet hasn't built out that uh, many, many year long reputation and, and um, proven to be uh, secure and, and, and efficient over time. Do, do, you, do you know if uh, Pocket requires the copy paste thing? Or does it open a Flipstarter directly? Has anyone tried it? No, I think it does it directly. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. OK. Yeah, yeah there is it, technically nothing, it, it's nothing required... stopping you from doing it directly. So. But we just, yeah, if, if I remember first. correctly, it requires you to do a change to the, um, to, to the uh, Flipstarter uh, campaign page so that it can interact with it. But it does all of the heavy lifting that we currently do in the Electrum, uh, in the Electron Cash Wallet, in the plugin. Thank you very much. Um, I see Max is back. Um, Max, um, you are our uh, special guest today. Uh, you have gone through the process of setting up a Flipstarter. Uh, and also uh, using Flipstarter um, to to fund uh, your farm. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience using Flipstarter and, of course, what you have done uh, in your area? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank all the people that have spoken concerning uh, Flipstarter. At the end of the day, I happen to be um, the beneficiary of all these efforts because uh, I've used um, Flipstarter to fund my project and it worked for me. And uh, my experience, I I delight so much in the experience 
that I had in creating uh, my project, okay, my campaign with Flipstarter. I think it's a simple step because uh, some of my friends have asked me as if uh, it's a difficult task for someone to create a campaign, flip starter campaign, but it's very simple. I think uh, is a, you have a, like a, a simple seven steps to create it. And I didn't spend any money in creating it. Uh, if at all I spent money, I didn't spend up to uh, more than $10 in creating it. Of course, I have a namecheap.com that accepts Bitcoin Cash uh, for a domain name. Okay, apart from that, that's the only uh, money that uh, I spent creating uh, Flip Starter. So we have, uh, I had a simple seven steps to create it. Creating a digital ocean account, deploying Flip Starter app from the marketplace, create a droplet that is a project, you know, which generates IP address, which is uh, uh, supposedly supposed to be the server where you set up your campaign. Then you generate your IP and copy the address to a browser where you can edit your project, your proposal, write everything that your sponsors need to know about your project. Then you go ahead to get a domain name uh, with around $10, or you can use netcheap.com that has Bitcoin Cash as well. Then um, you just copy your IP address that have gotten from the droplet, then you link it up with your uh, domain. That's all. Then you share your address with your friend. And people will look at your project and begin to, um, you know, begin to support you. And that's exactly what I did. And recently, uh, my project was sponsored from uh, Flipstarter, which I am still working on and updating the community. So it's a lovely experience. Thank you very much. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about any challenges you faced? Uh, was anything difficult, uh, or what was the most difficult? Uh, the creation of the flip starter or marketing of the flip starter? Uh, any any challenges you faced? Well, I didn't face much challenge than the little. Uh, did, did we lose Max? I don't hear him anymore. I don't hear him. Okay. Um, Max, come back. <laughs> that is put Next. into consideration whether kind of project what uh, supporting. Of course, I'm happy that uh, Flipstarter has made it possible for someone to get support for his or her good project uh, around the world, many people comes in to help someone instead of uh, entrepreneurs like like me going to the bank, you know, to get loan with a uh, loan that they will pay back with interest, on friendly interest. You can see how it started have come in to bridge the gap to make uh, life simple for the people of the world and someone like me have, have, have you know that had that experience is here to tell the people of the world that is a good experience that I had with the free starter and Bitcoin cash community so in a nutshell I didn't uh, have much challenge in setting it up Uh, we we sort of missed the beginning of of what you said there, but uh, all in all, it sounds like uh, your your uh, experience was extremely positive um, and uh, not very difficult. Um, could you uh, obviously some of us uh, are are very well acquainted with uh, what you have done? Uh, could you briefly tell perhaps people who do not know uh, what exactly uh, your flip starter was about? Um, could you tell us what you're doing uh, with 
the funds that you uh, collected from uh, people who pledged to your Flipstart? Max, <laughs> are you there? I'm not sure if Max is having a, an issue. I sent him a message to to see, but um, th there's one thing maybe while he's trying to sort that out sure. that I wanted to mention, uh, which is, uh, you know, like oh, I said, okay. not everything is, oh, there he is. Let's right. <laughs> I, um, I am building a farm. I am building a farm in my community. It's a farm that has uh, multiple things in it. It's a farm that after it, you'll be able to, uh, you know, give help to so many people from my community. We have uh, other entrepreneurs that will join in to help produce more food for my community. And in the same farm, is, uh, we have a section that where we plant trees, economic trees, that will also benefit the community and uh, Nigeria. Nigeria market. So uh, I struggled getting funds for my project. Uh, but luckily, uh, Starter and uh, Bitcoin Cash community helped, helped out. And currently we are building, we are, I'm working with the fund to build uh, this uh, multi-purpose farm that will have a uh, fish pond in it, that will have um, uh, vegetable garden that will have livestock like pigry and we have sheep and cattle in it. We'll also have uh, seedlings like coconut, um, uh, pawpaw, uh, granite. Yes. And uh, we also, with this fund, that uh, we have built an irrigation system inside the farm that will um, generate uh, water for the farm irrespective of uh, season, dry season or rainy season, we have uh, enough water in the farm. All these things are made possible by the fund that flip, flips that are made possible for my project in West Africa, Nigeria. Um, so currently, uh, the, the, the farm is in, is, in, is in progress, yes. And, uh, well, I, I am bringing up... Uh, um, reports to show the community how everything is uh, going on. I am posting my update in V.Cash and some of them are being posted to Twitter. Yes, that is so far for now. Thank you very much. Um, hey, if, uh, can I, can yeah. I add something there real quickly? Absolutely not. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, I just wanted to mention on, on that topic, because before you asked about, you know, things that are not BCH related, and I mentioned Max, and I just wanted to reiterate that I I just see this, it, it's currently quite kind of informal and not uh, fully settled how exactly it works, but the, the opportunity for informal economy, you know, for, for people who aren't necessarily... Uh, well, well, yeah, just for informal economy. This is all the people, there's like 2 billion people in the informal economy working around the world. And there's a lot of amazing businesses and a lot of amazing uh, things going on in that space. And they are generally excluded from traditional finance. Well, I call it legacy finance. Um, the legacy finance just doesn't want to touch them or is not in, involved, not interested. And, uh, you know, if I wanted to make an investment and just support Max's work, if I wanted to support him uh, without Bitcoin Cash or, or whatever, uh, with legacy finance, that would be very, very hard. And at the end of the day, what would happen is the bank says, no, we're not going to transfer your money to this. We're not going to transfer your money to, to that guy. We don't know who he is. We don't know who you are. You're not a, you're not a multimillionaire. You're not allowed to do things like that, whatever. Um, and it's really ridiculous. So, um, yeah, you got to be more careful. You have to be aware of who it is. You have to understand. You have to be able to trust people. You have to understand who you can trust and who you can't. 
But I mean, that's part of being an adult. And once you get to that point, you can say, okay, there's all these opportunities and people in the informal economy wanting to do great things. Now you can support them. You have a way with uh, Bitcoin Cash and these assurance contracts through Flipstarter to support people uh, anywhere in the world doing whatever it is that uh, they think is important and you think is important. I just, I don't know. You, you literally couldn't do that um, with a bunch of random people from all over the world. Um, to, to today with legacy finance, you can't do that. But you, you can easily do it with Flipstarter, as, as Max said. So I just love that aspect of it's kind of a pseudo investment, uh, public good infrastructure. It, it's not really clear exactly what it is, but but I love this aspect of it where it's not, you know, some kind of pump and dump. It's not a crypto token. It's not some weird thing. It's just, you know, there's somebody doing an amazing thing. They're a good person. They've earned trust by the things that they've done. And people around the world from anywhere can invest in them to whatever degree that they want to do. I love that. Oh, it's uh, very well said. Uh, Max touched on a little bit uh, what he's been doing as far as accountability. Um, he, you know, regularly posts photos on 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 Twitter and uh, writes articles on Redot Cash, so you can see the progress uh, of of his farm. Um, and that is all about building trust. Um, and if someone wanted to start a Flipstarter campaign, um, it doesn't matter where. Let's say uh, rural Australia, and they wanted to. Uh, you know, build a build a windmill or whatever it is they wanted to do. Um, does anybody? I mean, and I'm going to open this to the whole panel now. Does anybody have any suggestions on what they can do uh, to build trust, uh, which would make people more likely to uh, contribute to their Flipstarter campaign? No. <laughs> so uh, I can speak of things that Flipstarter could do differently to help them achieve requirement, but I don't really know how to improve on the actual trust. I, I mean, you I, could start by introducing yourself <laughs> and yeah. maybe show that you have some history of uh, making what you want to make and that you are capable. But uh, I mean, how do you ask for money from strangers? You have to... <laughs> entertain them somehow, I guess, show that <laughs> they're, they're likely, you're likely to make something out of them or money you give them. And perhaps even find an incentive. Maybe you can give them stickers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I have some opinions on this also. So Please. there's uh, so there's several aspects to it, right? There's one, which is just getting people hyped about it and interested and just I don't know what they call it, but the typical, um, you know, how to market something, how to get people hyped up about something. And uh, Mark Fauzon, I, I don't have the link right now, but uh, he has published a video on YouTube that's great, that explains, you know, like, hey, here's how you get people excited about what you're doing. Um, so that's one aspect of it. Maybe if I can get the link, I can post it later. But uh, uh, yeah, if you look at his YouTube, there's a good video there about that. Um and then the other aspect is the trust aspect, which is, okay, yeah, you can hype people up about it, but um, if people are being smart, they're not only going to listen to hype, right? They're going to look at you and understand who are you, what have you done, uh, what's your history. And from that perspective, and, and, and what's your project, what are you proposing to do? Do you have any idea what you're talking about? Do you have any weight? Um, and all of those aspects boil down to effectively a, a business plan, really, even if you don't call it a business plan, right? It's convincing people that, hey, I have this thing I want to do. I know what I'm doing. I have a history where I can accomplish things. And here's what I plan to do and how it's going to get done. Here's the budget. Here's where money is going to get spent, right? It's just a business plan, really. So, uh, yeah, we actually have an old article we published like two years ago about, hey, if you want to get funded, um, make a business plan like people have done since, you know, 200 years ago, whatever, <laughs> since the, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think oh. that's it, right? One is, one is marketing skill and one is uh, building trust.
is that uh, Flipstarter provides us a new mechanism to fund things and uh, you know do it the insurance contract way. But uh, you know if you look at the trust side of things, it doesn't actually look very different from you know all the other crypto or non crypto ways uh, we do trust in the real world. Uh, perhaps perhaps much later we would have you know crypto specific very sophisticated trust tools, but Flipstarter is not one of them. So just like the real world, uh, people look when people look at you uh, first, uh, the most important thing I, I, would, I would argue is, of course, track record. Um, people who have done uh, great things in the past are more likely to do great things in the future. And then... Um, uh, and and then there is all the all those other factors. Uh, you, if you present a well uh, documented uh, business plan, if you regularly post updates, um, if you can get other trusted people to uh, to vet you, and so on and so forth. Um, so it is. Um, it, it, I, I think this is a point that is worth uh, repeating. That uh, you know, Flipstart the. Tr- Flipstarter provides a better way to fund things and uh, a better way to hold things accountable, but uh, you will have to prove yourself just like in any other places where you're asking people to trust you with money. Um, a lot of people come, uh, they're, they're, well, not a lot, but there were people uh, uh, in the past who come to Flipstarter and then they ask, okay, how do I set this up? And then, they, okay, here's how, you, here's how you do it. You set it up and then they set it up and then they discover they put it put it up and maybe they sent out a tweet and then uh, a, a couple of weeks later their campaign ended and it was not funded and then they and then they asked and then they were upset well i thought bch has money where why was my thing not funded well money doesn't magically appear and trust doesn't <laughs> magically appear you know you have to convince people you have to convince people and people have to be convinced that they can tr- that your cause is worth that they uh, your cause is worthy and they can trust their money with your worthy cause it is a thing that you will have to do and a lot of times it is difficult it that part doesn't change so yeah yeah, and I want to I want to add on to that. At the end, uh, not at the end. I mean, when we did the original six flip starters, right? Like I said, the original flip starters were hyper focused on one very specific thing, which was uh, managing the consensus of Bitcoin Cash, the the nodes for that. And um, oh my God, those those flip starters were incredibly detailed. If you look at the the Bitcoin Cash node, the BCHN uh, original flip starter, wow. Like, there's so much detail in there. And uh, there's also been uh, uh, Rucknium. He published a flip starter called uh, Bitcoin Cash Red Red Team, I think, right? It's like a basically penetration testing type uh, flip starter where he's saying, hey, let's, let's, let's Iron Man uh, Cash Fusion and see how private it really is. <laughs> Um, and when he wrote his, it's, it's super well written. And it's obvious that he actually has a lot of experience writing uh, research and funding proposals because it's, it's really well written. And uh, uh, Software Verde has also written one that, that's very well presented as a business plan. Um, Petaka has also done it. There, there's been a bunch. Um, yeah, I, I should list them up somewhere that, that are just great examples of how to show people who you are, what you have done, and why you have earned trust, and why they can uh, believe the plan that you've made. There's some really good examples out there. Thank you very much. Um, imagine a username, you said uh, something that stuck out to me. You said uh, Flipstarter provides for better accountability. Um, could you please tell me a bit more about uh, the accountability? All right. So uh, I, well, this is at least what I personally think. Uh, The improved part on Flipstarter accountability is that uh, you have a set goal. And uh, if a, if a campaign is completed successfully, uh, it would have reached that goal. And, uh, you know, a good camp, a good campaign should have told its pledges uh, how it plans to spend this amount of money beforehand. And uh, so, you know, if you are a pledger and then you uh, pledge to this campaign, you can subsequently 
you can subsequently hold the uh, hold the guy doing the campaign uh, accountable for what he pledged before, and then you know his reputation would then you would then be able to uh, affect his reputation in concrete ways later. Uh, a pr this is in contrast to a problem that was kind of long-standing in the past uh, that I've observed in BCH as well before Flipstarter uh, and in other places where people just, you know, people drop random buckets of money and it, it, is, it, is, very, it is very difficult to tell, uh, it is very difficult to tell whether those fundings are adequate. And then, you know, at, at different times, you just have to take people's words for it and say, okay, you, okay, you gave me money, but it's not enough. So poof, it's gone. It's used to pay rent or something. And then it's gone and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, if you don't give money, then it's even worse. And then if you give money, well, how much is, how much is enough? Uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, and uh, Flipstarter also forces basically forces campaigners to put in this detailed defined plans generally. Uh, and uh, I think all of those things contribute to uh, making people more accountable. But of course, at the end of the day, someone, someone still have to make the effort, usually the pledges, but, but often other community members still have to make the effort of uh, uh, actually holding, actually holding the, uh, the campaigns accountable in, in at the end of the day. Uh, just per, just because they were provided the adequate tools doesn't mean that that would absolutely happen. So, thank you very much, um, Max. Uh, you are our resident expert um, on getting Flipstarters uh, funded. Could you tell us a little bit about? Uh, how you were able to convince people to trust you that you were going to deliver, uh, you were going to actually make this farm and not just disappear with all of the money. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, I think uh, it's all boiled down in uh, somebody building trust. You know, one need to build trust to make people to trust you. But I think I'm still uh, trying to make people to trust me the most. But it, it, it all started uh, with uh, uh, Max living his normal life, trying to make things work for him and uh, finding a community that uh, has people that have this uh, compassion and listening to so real people that are into real things, you know. So I started with uh, Bitcoin Cash Community, yeah. I joined read.cash community and uh, I tried to present everything that I was doing so that people of the world could see my struggles and uh, you know, my capacities and my ability. So I believe that uh, most of the people that sponsored my free that were watching and seeing uh, everything that was going on with my environment, with my community, with my real life. And... Uh, I, 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 could, I could remember that I asked for loan, you know, and some of the community people, you know, entrust me with a soft loan, and they watched me deliver on those things. You know, they, I delivered with the loan that I obtained from some of uh, Bitcoin Cash community. I think gradually from there, I began to build trust. Uh, and people could say that, okay, since... Uh, he collected a loan and uh, delivered. Um, he's now asking for uh, further help. Uh, let's try and see whether he will deliver again. I can remember one of the community members who gave me a soft loan to to um, to support my community in providing water, which uh, I I was able to accomplish. We build an irrigation reservoir, and we had tanker that takes water to farmers inside the, the farms and uh, to community members. Uh, I think it's something that one don't doesn't doesn't get. Uh, you have to really work to have people to trust you. So it didn't happen to me in a day or two. This is something that took me months, if not uh, up to a year, to 
you let community know me and know my struggles and what I'm passing through and my project. And of course, I also uh, wrote a business plan, which I posted, and the community will be able to see what I'm doing and uh, my, my challenges. Uh, this is what I do. This is what I did to get um, listening here from there. And I still know that they are also still looking up to me to see if I'll be able to deliver on this present project. And if, if I deliver, I believe uh, is how reputation is built. You know, somebody being accountable and somebody promising to do something and you are funded and at the end of the day, you are able to deliver. This is how to build trust. And this is exactly what I did. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. So to, to summarize, uh, it sounded like uh, you, you you started small. Uh, you you had a uh, you had a relatively easy to accomplish uh, goal, and once uh, you did that, uh, then you set your sights a little bit higher. Uh, you uh, showed the community that you were able to do uh, the first small goal, uh, and then from there leveled up and uh, created a, a more ambitious goal um, and uh, just by continuing to show the community that uh, you are able to deliver um, and having a good business plan, um, people then uh, go on to trust you um, and uh, um, yeah, start small and, and build from there. Um, it sounds, sounds good. I can even say, so I watched... Max since he came into BCH ecosystem um, and he was working on things and explaining why he was doing things like why he was doing his garden um, I mean when I say garden it's like pretty significant right the amount of uh, volume of, of produce he was he was uh, pr creating um, when, when he was doing that he was doing that all by himself and it was just to increase food security in his community, that's a significant issue in his community. And and then uh, he showed that he was doing that himself and he was working on it and and he got positive reinforcement from it. And then he said, okay, well, yeah, I, I'd like to do more because this is really important for my community. So he, he started without any funding at all, doing it himself uh, and just showing that he was serious about what he was doing. So that's not something everybody can do, but there is some amount of, I mean, there's a huge value to bootstrapping. It's a hard thing to do. It's really painful, but um, that there is a lot of value in bootstrapping and just showing that, hey, this is so important that I'm going to do it anyway, and then build trust that way. So, yeah, it's 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 tough, but he did it. Um, he certainly has. Uh, I've enjoyed watching his progress, um, and uh, I I hope to. Uh, to see more of what you uh, build, Max, with your farm. I, I saw recently your new walls and everything. It's uh, uh, great. Um, continuing on, on the topic of um, uh, accountability, uh, one, one issue that, that people probably have encountered is that uh, when a flip starter is completed, uh, people tend to take down the website that uh, was hosting uh, their flip starter campaign. So even if you did want to hold someone accountable, um, how, how do you find out uh, uh, what people were promising to begin with? I think, uh, uh, Dagger, are you involved in uh, any sort of archive effort? Well, yeah, I, I did make that one website that tries to track all the flip starters. And, and as part of tracking, we do take, a, I don't, or I do take a screenshot of the flip starter. Uh, both when it started and when when it when it's done, and and uh, it has shown to be useful as you say, because people take down their flip starter. I, I don't know why they do that. I, I would think you should keep the flip starter running at least for a couple of months after a, or at least until you finish it, basically. But uh, I, is there an economic incentive to close it down or? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, do, that... I do host the website flipstarters.bitcoincast.network. So if anyone wants to look. 
Thank you. I, I, I assume that it's, it is an economic reason people pay for hosting for something that perhaps they don't need anymore. Um, but that's just my guess. Um, well, 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 you do need it because you want to show accountability. <laughs> <laughs> not, not everybody thinks that way, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy that uh, your archive exists. Um, I've, I've used it uh, multiple times when uh, doing some research. So thank you very much for providing that service. Um, Oh, thank you for using it. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very basic. I didn't spend a lot of time making it, but uh, I hope to be able to improve on it. I'm getting a friend of mine who is a front-end developer. And I'm trying to sell him on uh, maybe maybe do the first flip starter for flip starter to improve that website. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put that link in the nest at the top of the 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 stream here, so anybody who wants to see it can check that out there. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see it, but I'll check later. <laughs> um, I trust you. I trust you. Uh, no, okay, I see it. Um, all right. Um, I would like to uh, now open the uh, stage to uh, our audience. Uh, if anyone has any questions for people here, um, feel free to raise your hand. Um, oh, I see we have one already. Um, if I have no idea who you are, I'll probably not say uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Cashew. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't assume. Uh, Hi, Bitcoin Cashew here. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. So just building on the flip start tree thing, I would love to see a similar idea, but uh, from a bounty perspective where Similar to Flipstarter, we pre-assign some funds towards some initiative, and then we receive proposals on it in a decentralized manner as well. A bounty website. Um, <clears throat> so not Flipstarter, uh, Flip Finisher. That's a nice name. Or it could be a spin-off <laughs> based on it, but yes, carries the same idea, <laughs> a decentralized way where we basically propose things that we want to see built, and then we receive proposals for it, and then we can even pre-fund. So we pre-allocate, say, 10, 50 BCH, whatever it is, for towards a specific project. And then the community starts submitting different proposals, and we'll zero in on one of them. That sounds a lot like a, a decentralized autonomous organization. <laughs> where you did, where you with some tokenomics <laughs> where you can buy right. on the proposals, I guess. Yeah, uh that is uh that is currently very difficult to do on mainchain. I think there I think there are I think there are certain ways to do it on smart PCH. But uh there are also proposals on mainchain that might make this easier. Uh but you know, it it is a it is a good it is a good high level idea, but a lot of the uh, details and how to minimize trust and uh, what kind of uh, modifications needs to be made uh, and so on and so forth need to be thought uh, need to be thought through a lot more. But yeah, um, thank you for the suggestion. I, I hope somebody can build that. Somebody could run a flip starter flip starter for a flip finisher. Um, you, you have my permission to use that name, uh, whoever wants to go ahead and build that. Uh, are there any other questions? Does anyone want to know what is being copy pasted uh, to and from the Flipstarter, like from the Flipstarter to the wallets and back? <laughs> what is the giant blob of just text that you copy paste right yeah yeah what is it <laughs> so what do you what you copy from the flip starter is a partial transaction where you can see where the money is going and how much money is going there and, and basically what you co paste copy and paste back to the flip starter is a uh, approval in the form of a signature of your wallet that if you manage to get enough money into the transaction to cover the money going out of the transaction, then you may take the money. So so 
Flipstarter has this weird property of the money doesn't leave your wallet when you pledge. It just mysteriously disappears when the when the proposal is fully funded. But until then, it is in your wallet and you can cancel at any time. This is very unique for a crowdfunding form. Did that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Probably most people who have maybe used uh, Kickstarter but have never used Flipstarter, maybe even some who have used Flipstarter, don't realize um, how unique this thing really is in terms of you know how powerful it is and how much freedom there is in this thing. Um, that you can fund a campaign and then halfway through it just be like, that never mind that that was a bad idea i didn't actually want to support that um cancel your transaction and who cares that's your choice right there's no contractual setup there's no uh you know you didn't agree to some terms of service for some kickstarter thing that says oh and if we want to we can just also decide to take your money or yeah there's no know, middleman holding your money yeah right? there's no yeah. middleman in there that's a huge yeah, point yeah. That, that's not yeah. obvious yeah Yes, I have the experience too because I could remember during my flip starter campaign, someone I uh, pledged for me and later he withdraw the pledge, and I had to, you know, engage the person to understand what happened. Is, is it that you don't trust uh, what I'm doing, or maybe you did it by mistake? You pledged by mistake, and the person politely told me that no, that he needed that money back to do something that he will later come back to pledge for my campaign. And which he later did. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, more flexible and, um, you know, free. Anybody can do, follow your choice and do what you like, you know, do the right thing. It's not mandatory. You can withdraw, you can pledge. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I think people really have to try it to, it's just like crypto in general, right? Like until you've actually paid for something and then been like, wait, that's it? It's that easy? That's all I have to do and I'm done? <laughs> Until you've actually experienced the, the flip starter, it's really hard to, to understand. Wait, I didn't have to create an account. I don't have to give somebody my email. I don't have to like prove to them that you know I'm a millionaire in order to do whatever, who knows. Um, all you do is go on somebody's campaign and say, oh yeah, I want to support you. And you're done, just like it should be. Um, yeah, until people try it, I don't think they really get uh, how amazing it is to, to cut out that middleman. You know, in the in the beginning of this conversation, we talked about are there any flip starters that um, have not been infrastructure or or Bitcoin Cash based? And I and I thought of the one flip starter which was a gym. There was this gym that refused to closed during the pandemic and the, and the government basically um, froze their bank accounts <laughs> uh, and, and and there was a flip starter to to help them to fund them and and they, I think it's interesting because this flip starter used a property of flip starter that that no one else has that you don't need a, a middleman you don't need a bank and, and and even though they had their account frozen, they were able to receive the funding. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah that's one of the clips. I thought and not only receive funding, but uh, like you name explained at the beginning, um, they explain this is what we can do with the funding, and this is what it's going to do. This is what it's going to accomplish. Um, and and if you get the full set of funding to to achieve that, then yeah, it goes through. Um, in a trustless way, nobody has to. Uh, there's no middleman who approves it, right? It happens on on chain. Um, and if if not enough people think that that's a viable proposal that you're making, it doesn't happen, and you don't lose any money. You've not lost anything. Um, it's it's great. I love it. In addition, the people that pledged we were like in. They were they had no risk of having their bank account frozen because. They donated to this gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Uh, right, right, right. Which we saw like with um, Freedom Convoy. 
where the government right. said yeah, said yeah. that uh, anyone who pledged or, or donated to Freedom Convoy at some point will have their bank account account maybe frozen. So so it protects the pledger as well in in cases like this. Which is That's exactly cool. right. It is exactly right, and it doesn't really matter if you agree with them or not. If you don't agree, you don't participate, <laughs> right? But if somebody's doing a thing that that for whatever reason the banks don't like, like if you're trying to fund BCH so that you don't have to deal with banks anymore, <laughs> then of course the banks are not going to like that. But uh, yeah, you're you're free to do whatever it is that you want to to do with it. I saw um, uh, a question on here. I saw in a in a private message about. Uh, an issue with Flipstarter, which is the volatility issue. Um, and I wanted to mention about that. So there's an issue. Um, if you look at uh, the history of Flipstarters, you know, somebody creates a Flipstarter and they say, hey, I don't know how long this is going to take, maybe one month. Um, so they open it up for one month for campaigns and for, for people to make pledges and for them to do marketing and so forth. And at the beginning of the campaign, they say, oh, it's going to be, you know, 1,000 BCH. And they're imagining the purchasing power of that 1,000 BCH. But then at the end of the month, the price has, uh, you know, the purchasing power of that BCH has gone up or down. Um, and in BCH, it's in fixed amounts, right? You're not dealing with dollars or gold or whatever. You're not dealing with other assets. You're dealing with BCH. So at the end of the campaign, it's still 1,000 BCH. And that may have changed value, uh, purchasing power. So th there is all kinds of possibilities with Flipstarter campaigns to add price stability so that the money that people send in actually gets put into a contract that has some kind of stability feature where you get, you know, however many US dollars or rupees or whatever it is you want your stability to be in. Th that's a possibility. There's, there's room for that to be done. Um, yeah, and there's also possibilities for things like uh, there's a thing called a Macenas contract, which is like a, a ongoing payment or a recurring payment where you could put money in and then um, over time, people get funded from the results of the contract as opposed to all at once. So they get paid in monthly installments and that would be all on chain, right? Like not a, not a, um, uh, some kind of custodial things. It would be through a smart contract. So there's a lot of, there's a huge amount of room for, for kind of innovation and, and possibilities and ideas for people to do different uh, Lego constructions of what a funding campaign looks like. It just needs to be done. And this comes back to the point I said earlier of, uh, it just depends on somebody setting up a business model for it, really. Well, if you're going to have things uh, denominated in uh, fiat currencies, you, you will still need some kind of oracle to tell the price. So that is one piece of infrastructure that uh, needs to come out and be publicly available first. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> what, what could be used uh, in order to... Uh, uh sort of hedge uh, against uh, uh, volatility in some way. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is going in, into full-on shill, shill <laughs> uh, uh, territory. So General Protocols is, is very interested in all of these things because we, we see Bitcoin Cash as the basis of um, an, a parallel economy where all the people who uh, are being squeezed out of legacy finance because for whatever reason legacy finance doesn't like what they're doing or doesn't like who they are um or people who just don't like to be you know surveilled they don't like everything they do being watched and documented and put into a database by somebody um so all those, those that kind of growing number of people i think uh it, it's attractive to them and uh general protocols is working on that kind of thing including this uh, price oracles and the stability contracts and that kind of thing. I, I don't want to turn into a shill, but <laughs> all of this stuff is connected. And and yeah, may, maybe in the future we'll we'll publish something about that. But yeah. Um, we have a new speaker with us, uh, Jerry. Um, 
your uh, Twitter profile is protected, so I hope uh, you're not a troll. <laughs> Please join the conversation. Hi, hi. Sorry, it's uh, <clears throat> it's at Lightstorm, but uh, yeah, I just uh, had a question on uh, the the flip starter uh, stuff. Um, I had worked with uh, Cache Script in the past uh, quite a lot, quite extensively, actually. And I know that um, you know since the May upgrade, there had been a lot more new features than native introspection or whatnot that's been put in. Uh, I was just wondering if there was like uh, any thoughts on using the cache script uh, scripts as the basis for facilitating some of these uh, cache. Uh, sorry, some of these uh, flip starter campaigns. Uh, should I jump in? Go um, okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, there is a guy sp spearheading this. Uh, he's uh, Matthew, who is unfortunately not in this room right now. But uh, so um, after, uh, after the May upgrade, we, uh, gain a, uh, we gain introspection capability, which made basically writing a lot of cache script stuff a lot easier, especially the covenants, and uh, this opened new doors. So one thing that was particularly uh, looked at, um, you know, closely was the possibility to use uh, cache script to and covenants to chain transactions and break the limit uh, of uh, the traditional flip starter because the traditional flip starter relies on the atomicity of uh, transactions to provide for insurance contracts, but the if you if we do that uh, and try to cram everything in a single transaction, uh, the size of that transaction is not infinite. There is only 100k that's allowed in general on the Bitcoin Cash network uh, for good for good scaling and otherwise reasons. So uh, we so together with uh, Matthew, we actually looked a little closer and uh, decided, well, you you know what, it is possible to break that limit using a uh, using a uh, transaction chain by using uh, cash script. Uh, there is, so the upside is that uh, you can do basically unlimited number of pledges. The downside is that you lose some of the aforementioned, you know, uh, withdraw, uh, withdraw anytime, um, uh, basically uh, convenience. Uh, the simplest construction of this would require that uh, people pledge and then they can only withdraw if basically the campaign fails. Uh, so there are other ideas about this, but the increased complexity and it is very much a feel in flux. And there are some proposals on the table that is for May 2023, which would further improve on this. But uh, 2022 May upgrade already gave us plenty to, uh, you know, just uh, imagine and work and work about. So yeah, it is it is uh, a uh, it is uh, a field that is in flux, and if you are interested, you are definitely welcome to join. So a quick update to that: uh, you said that it removes the ability to uh, cancel the pledge at any time, uh, but I'm pretty sure that for, for Jason Dreisner uh, used to work at BitPay. Yeah, he he. Uh, proposed a way to, to actually achieve that part as well. So I think it's a solvable problem. Right. Um, if I may just ask uh, uh, another part to that question. Um, you guys had mentioned that, uh, you know, like Flipstarter is basically one of the most unique uh, solution offerings out there. Uh, I'm just kind of curious as to what is kind of like stopping or like holding back, uh, letting other people know uh, in this space. So maybe not necessarily like the, the BCH crowd, but I know like right now there's a big push towards smart BCH with all the Ethereum uh, aspect as well. Um, do you think like it's something just is lacking in the marketing or just like lack of awareness in like the non-BCH space? Because I know like right now there's a lot of people trying to work on these you know, fancy smart contracts, trying to do these kinds of Kickstarter campaigns. Um, but obviously, you know, like it's a lot more gas and resource intensive. So I'm just wondering your thoughts there. Um, so, uh, it is like a lot of other things, not, it's not just limited to BCH, but you know, uh, even I would say just crypto or even public goods in general, 
uh, in that someone has to take ownership and do the hard and do the hard work of pushing it. So uh, as Emergent Reasons mentioned uh, earlier, that Flipstarter is a technical tool that is provided out there. Anyone can host it themselves. There plenty have done so, but. Um, so far, you know, uh, nobody, no, nobody yet has taken up uh, the mantle of uh, uh, having a fully functional, fully functional platform that they can earn money from, that they can earn money from, and then you know provide a host of other desired services like you know, I don't know, vetting or uh, vetting or something or something else and other uh, bells and whistles, and. Uh, it doesn't need to be a for-profit uh, platform either. It can be. It can come in other forms. But basically, you know, if you want something to, if you if you want something to get big, someone has to roll up their sleeves and uh, take charge. Uh, and uh, that is a common theme that we have seen elsewhere. Uh, so it, yeah. So is, is that more like a like a marketing effort uh, that needs to be done? Because like it seems like on the technical side, it seems very good. It's just that you know, like people outside of the BCH community, or like largely outside of the BCH community, don't really know that even these solutions exist. Right. Uh, the, well, there is there is the marketing there is a marketing side of it, but the, but there is also you know the. Uh, Downstream development and just maintenance and operational aspects aspects of it. You know, someone has to sit there and answer questions, and uh, someone has to uh, you know, if you want to market and someone comes in, you have to tell them and perhaps assist them on how to campaign and so on and so forth. You know, some of these things were done by volunteers in within B within BCH, but in order to get big, you know, someone has to have serious plans and take charge to provide all the services. Uh, and marketing is one aspect of it. So Yeah, I'll I'll TLDR that entrepreneurs. Um the the you know once somebody's making money off of a thing, they, they tend to naturally market it. Right. Um so if somebody is is we wrote an article two years ago about in the name of the article was who will build the platform um and, and this is a, a play on the old phrase you know who will build the roads which is kind of the the, the counterpoint that people throw against voluntary things and uh, so we wrote this article who will build the platform and and that remains to be done um an entrepreneur has has entrepreneur has not yet stepped up to to say okay i'm going to build a platform that turns uh you know permissionless funding into a business model um and and once somebody does that they're going to be naturally incentivized to to go out there and and share the word uh so so i'm really looking forward to that somebody can do it maybe general protocols might do that in the future but you know until we do it's an it's an open field somebody could pick it up and do that um and and the reason it hasn't been done perhaps one uh answer to that is just the decentralized nature of the BCH network, right? It's one of the few cryptos that is actually decentralized. There is no company that owns Bitcoin Cash. There is no foundation that, that you know, controls Bitcoin Cash. And in that situation, marketing has been an open question. How do you do marketing for an actually decentralized network where anything you do is, um, you know, doesn't only benefit you or doesn't primarily benefit you it's it's i think it's still an open question um uh and and i think flipstarter might be a part of that right if somebody came up with a good marketing campaign like hey i really want to get flipstarter out into the world i want all kinds of people using it not just for bch network things just for funding all kinds of projects if somebody came up with a good marketing campaign for that i'm pretty sure that would get funded on flipstarter so I think it's just a matter of people thinking outside the box, coming up with new business models that work on actually decentralized networks like Bitcoin Cash and, uh, and putting them out there and getting them funded and executing them. All right. Thanks. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Good question. Hard question. That is indeed uh, the big question. I think um, in the previous network discussions, again, I think it was Saqib who, who 
was talking about um, how you know you don't market the U.S. dollar. Um, you you market the project that's built that uses uh, the platform or or whatever it is. Um, and I think uh, we're going to see that with with Bitcoin Cash as well. Uh, marketing the coin and its usefulness is great, but uh, how marketing is really going to take off is is projects that are built upon it. Um, whether that's uh, uh, a crowdfunding campaign website or a pay-to-earn game or whatever the case may be. Um, it'll be uh, things that are built upon it. Absolutely. And, and this, this speaks to the whole utility aspect, right? Which is, which I think is, is funny and also excellent about Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. Um, there, was a, there was a podcast, I think it was Bitcoin Cash podcast, where uh, Bennett Tomlin, he's a very famous... Uh, you know, crypto critic, right? He doesn't, he doesn't think crypto is bad, but he's a very extremely well-educated and well-spoken um, person who talks about how the vast majority of crypto is complete garbage. Um, and, it, and, and for anybody who lived through the dot-com uh, era and the dot-com boom and bust, the bubble and bust, it, there's so many parallels to what's going on right now. And that's one of the things I love about Bitcoin Cash, where it's all about utility and price goes up and down. And sometimes it sucks. Uh, the, the relative price compared to a lot of coins is, is not, not, a, not a happy thing to talk about, right? But uh, when it comes to who's going to survive the bubble, who's going to actually be there when, uh, when the bubble pops on whatever stable coins and everything going on, there's no doubt whatsoever in my mind that that Bitcoin Cash ecosystem is going to keep going because it's all about utility and it's all about making itself um, useful to people to conduct commerce, to conduct, to build economies, uh, to do payments, to do all of the things. So it's actually about being useful. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to, <laughs> to say that the, that's a big aspect of it. <laughs> no problem. Um we have been talking for an hour and a half. Uh, I am okay continuing on, but I completely understand if other people need to jump off. Everybody has their own life. We're all in various places around the world. Um, so take this as an opportunity to leave uh, if you so choose. Um, and uh, if uh, anyone wants to stay and chat and perhaps open up the discussion to uh, all things BCH, not just Flipstarter oriented, uh, that's fine with me as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to hang around for a little while. And uh, anybody else who wants to jump off, that's fine. I see Mark has a... Uh, I'm going to add him as a speaker. I asked him if he might be interested in discussing the marketing aspect. Mark, are you there? I think he's connecting right now. I don't see him. Hey, Mark. Welcome. There he is. Hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey. Well, as the conversation is winding down, I thought I'd uh, jump on and just say <laughs> hello to everyone and uh, thank you guys for uh, hosting this. And um, I wanted to give, uh, well, I have a lot of thoughts about marketing Bitcoin Cash and um, I've reached out to some of you privately about it. And uh, maybe that's something in the future, you know, we could talk more about. But um, with Flipstarter, I think that some of the ideas that we've heard tonight are really interesting. Obviously, I've I've really benefited from Flipstarter, and one of the things that I reflected on was, um, you know, what happens when there's volatility, right? What happens when you do a Flipstarter, and the price either goes up or goes down, and uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the volatility of it, the risk of it dropping, uh, in a way, is, is almost beneficial. And what I mean by that is. If I do a flip starter to raise funds, at least in the context of trying to improve Bitcoin Cash, you know, if, if it's for funds maybe that aren't related to Bitcoin Cash or helping the network, maybe uh, something like you guys were talking about a DAO or whatever that would help stabilize would be useful. But um, in the case of helping Bitcoin Cash, if the coin drops and I'm getting money from the community, um, then I feel like that's a great incentive for me to continue and follow through with what I promised to get the coin back up, to help the network improve. Uh, and, and obviously if the price goes up, that's great. And everyone can celebrate, but if it goes down, 
and you know you ask for let's say 100 bitcoin cash and the usd value of it falls by 30 percent uh work hard do what you can to improve the network to bring that that amount up and i think that um that mindset is probably pretty healthy in my estimation when you go into your flip starter is knowing hey you know if this goes down i'm i'm in and i want to contribute to to bringing it back up and um i think that's part of the part of the equation uh for for having a flip starter is is knowing um that the volatility is is there but it's it's not necessarily a bad thing uh it can help people stay um accountable um i don't know but also hey the other thing i wanted to say is uh, I got some messages about the conference, and I just wanted to give a, a little update here. Uh, the first thing is that there's a few people who I think everyone here would really like to have at the conference. Um, and uh, the date that was proposed, which is the 12th and 13th, doesn't work for some of those people. So uh, I've updated the website just to say November of 2022. It doesn't have the exact day. And I'm waiting to hear back from a few people uh, to confirm what days would be best for them. So hopefully within a week, I'll have the exact day up uh, and then we'll get everything launched. One other thing that I wanted to also talk about is use.cash. So as you guys might, may or may not know, I created a website called use.cash that's fairly basic right now. Uh, and it, the function of it is to make um, access into Bitcoin Cash uh, more streamlined, more simple, more beginner friendly. So that's the the kind of concept behind it. So um, on that, I have a few projects that are working in tandem. One, I'm working with the developer Shomari. So there's a API and um, tech side of use.cash that will be uh, launching hopefully pretty soon. I actually have a meeting with him today. Uh, and the second thing is there's going to be a pretty big uh, website overhaul. Uh, just to make it more modern, more clean. Um, one of the things that I loved from Kim.com was the Why Bitcoin Cash website. But I always thought that that website is great for people who understand what Bitcoin and what crypto is. And it functions more as a way to compare Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to each other versus a website that's strictly what is Bitcoin Cash with the same kind of uh, use of clever imagery and metaphor and, sim and simplicity, but also visually appealing, that would really target new business owners. Why does Bitcoin Cash benefit them? You know, what can you do with it? Why would you ever accept this asset, which is volatile, right? So um, I'm very excited about rebuilding Use.Cash. So the homepage uh, is is answering those questions. So anyway, those are some of the things that I have been working on uh, recently, and I just wanted to give some updates. But um, yeah, I'm really happy that we're doing these um, spaces. Uh, it seems like monthly. I think it's a really fantastic uh, way to keep us um, communicating and, and uh, you know figuring out solutions to some of the uh, challenges that we have with, with Bitcoin Cash. Nice, Mark. And and by the way, uh, for anybody who's listening, I did link uh, in the top in the nest of the the discussion of the 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 stream that uh the the video from Mark talking about how to to market your flip starter campaign. Thanks, Mark. And uh, one last thing, maybe uh, let me just mention quickly, uh, if unless anybody else has something to talk about, but I just wanted to mention the. Uh, for people who are thinking about Flipstarter, like, what is this? What is it interesting? Let me just give two numbers, which we probably should have given at the beginning. Uh, one is that uh, Flipstarter has been used to raise uh, 13,000 BCH for various projects. This isn't minor stuff, right? Um, I mean, it's nothing compared to, to huge VC type valuations or whatever, but... Uh, for something that was made in such a short time and for very specific use, and now it's become general so that anybody can use it to raise funds for something, 13,000 BCH is not a small number. And if we translate that to US dollar amounts at the time that the campaigns were funded, this is over five and a half million dollars. So 
people have pledged a significant amount of money for things to get done. Um, there, there's, there's, a, there's an opportunity here for people who want to make campaigns, who want to make something happen, who want to do some kind of voluntary project, uh, who want to fund something, who want to make a platform to, to make all this work. Uh, there's all kinds of opportunities here. So I look forward to seeing where this all goes from here. Thank you very much. Um, I want to uh, just uh, touch back on, on uh, what Mark was saying about uh, uh, spaces happening uh, more often. Uh, there will be another space on the 5th uh, hosted by uh, Fiendish Crypto, who did the last extremely popular one. Um, uh, but uh, I, I forget what time it is. Uh, <laughs> please forgive me. Uh, I'm sure I retweeted it. Uh, I'll check later, but uh, that is another space uh, that's coming up uh, in a couple days. Um, so be sure to join that one. Um, it will be a general general BCH discussion, not focused on um, uh, not focused on uh, Flipstarter. Um, and on that note, I'm going to shut it down. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Sorry, Sherry, um, we we didn't get to you, but uh, um, it's quite late here. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Thanks a lot for setting this up, Chico Lightning and Satoshi's Angels, and to the panel here. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thank Take you. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Everybody, thank you very much. Bye, Max. Bye, Dagger. Thanks, Mark.